everybody, this is Chris. Thank you for joining me. So in today's video, we're going to be making a Valentine's card, of course, and we're going to paint this one. So it's you're going to put a little bit more of your heart, that's the case, in this card because you're really going to put a little bit of your energy and your artistic fiber in here. So we're going to use watercolors and we're going to use watercolor paper that's for our heart and it just it's just a normal card in the background this one is going to open up this way it doesn't matter how it's going to open we are really going to concentrate on the painting so we're going to lo do loose flowers here with our uh, watercolors i am using for the paper a 300 grams it's really thick and it really absorbs a lot of water the 200 grams is not bad if that's what you have just use it don't go and run 300 but i like using only 300 because you can really play with a lot of water it's going to absorb it much much more so and let's do that so what we're going to do and i've already pre-cut my card it's a little under a a2 size card because i'm not going to do exactly the same one that i've done here where i i cut out my heart i'm going to leave it plain this time so i've cut it just a little under a normal a2 size card there's no right or wrong on mine. Sometimes, depending on the brands, you might have a wrong, not a wrong side, but there's one with maybe more tooth to it. What I've done here is I've pre-cut a heart into a sheet of paper. It's going to be my template. So you fold your paper in half, and then you're just going to cut this shape around. It's very easy. And I'm going to use this, as I said, like a template. So I'm going to trace it, and I would, I'm maybe going to do this a little blacker than I would do it normally just so that you can see the lines it's just to make an outline when you'll do that home go very light handed on this so we'll be able to erase you might see it here erase the lines here but I, for the purpose of the video I try to make it a little blacker that's done and now we're going to trace and not trace but we're going to paint some flowers so these are some flowers I have done here they have no particular shape it's for beginners painting it's really easy that's the one i've done here i've also been training a little bit with roses and some other roses are here but i thought that for a beginner this one would be nice this one is a little tiny bit harder not that much but if you are already a painter you will of course do the the flowers you like so first what i'm going to do and i'm going to make mine a little bigger than these i've done quite small so i needed a lot to fill up my heart this time i'm going to make some bigger ones so i'm only going to choose three colors i'm going to use um crimson yellow and it's not exactly the color i wanted but that's what i have here it's deep green it's not sap green which i prefer so i did a little mix with this and another lighter a little bit of yellow all right, so first what I'm going to use, and I, you're going to work with water. That's how uh, watercolors work. It's not acrylic, but if you don't have watercolor and you only have acrylics, you can do that as well. And it's really going to be simple. So I'm going to use a small brush for this. Might come a little closer, and this is really going to be easy. Loose flowers. And you're going to go and press down your paintbrush and just wiggle a little bit and you're going to make all your flowers. They don't have to touch each other. And I'm trying not to make all of them, maybe not exactly the same size, or all very bright, all very light. It's just going to, and I leave a little space, like a little hole in the center. You don't have to, some of them will not. I'm going to add a little bit of water because I think it's too, maybe too bright. Normally watercolor is meant to be like, fainted colors muted colors um i am more on the acrylic side i like bright colors i like three-dimensional usually with watercolor you don't have that three touch three effect you can have three effect a 3d effect but i mean it's it's completely different but i like to use watercolor because i think it's i don't know it's very relaxing more relaxing maybe than using acrylics or I don't know it's different I, I enjoy both even though I am more into acrylics to be honest okay so I'm going to do this all over my heart 
And if you think sometimes that you need a little bit of color, just add be, while it's still um, wet, a little bit of color like this. I need a little bit more here. And the paint is going to follow where your water is. It's going to stay there. See, I want to add a little bit of, of coloring there. I'm just adding a tiny bit and it's going to move around only where I put water. This is what I like also with this. It's a wonderful technique. So I'm going to do this a bit more and I'm going to fill up my heart. I'm going to go a little quicker. The bigger your flowers are going to be, the faster it's going to also be to fill up your heart. There you go. Okay, I'm going to throw in here a little bit more color just in some areas. And what you need to remember also is like watercolor dries lighter than what you can see because of the color, the, the water. It's going to dry maybe, I don't know if it, you call this three tones under, but it's going to light up. So if you want it to be a bit vibrant, add more color to it. I don't want to add everywhere, just maybe a little bit on that side. I'm not really taking care of the shadows right now where the light is coming. I'm doing this very easy and very loose for everybody. And I'm not a specialist. I am not a watercolor professional. I just enjoy using it. And you have so many talented artists out there that will explain much better how watercolor works and paper. But the paper is important. If you want, you can't do this on just copy paper or your regular cardstock that you would do for card making. I like the way it looks. So before it dries out, I'm going to put a little bit of yellow in there in the center of my flowers. And it's going to mix, okay? Because it's wet, it's wet on wet, it's going to mix. So sometimes it's going to be where it's completely dry, it's going to have a nice yellow. And other, on other times, it's going to look a bit orangey. And that's exactly what I want. I don't want this to be perfect. It's loose again. And it's not going to make my flowers look orangey because the main part of it is still quite dry, but it's still going to have a nice tone and I, I want it to be kind of bright. It's Valentine's, you know, it's love, it's passion. Oops. And a little bit more around here. You can see how fast this is. You can make a whole bunch of these if you want to sell them. A bit more yellow. I need to clean up this and use more yellow. And if you want to add more, me, leave it to dry. So when you want to leave it to dry, there are two, in different ways. Leave it to dry naturally like this, or you can speed up the process with a uh, hair um, hair tool, hair dryer, if you wish, or your heat gun. That'll do too. I think I'm going to leave it as is. I like the way it's going. The blends that I have sometimes, I have a bright yellow here. It's more or less muted and mixed with the other colors, but I like the look of it and I'm going to keep it this way. So before adding now my leaves, because everything is wet and you can know because it's bright, you see how shiny it is? That means it's wet. So when I'll come back, I'm going to leave this to dry because if I were to put my green in here, it's going to mix with the yellow, it's going to mix with the... Um, the yellow it wouldn't be that a problem because it would make a lighter, uh, a more yellowish green. But if I would make, put it now with the red, it would look brownish and it's not going to look nice. So I'm going to leave this to dry and then I will put my leaves in there because I don't really have any dry area. So there's another thing. When it's shiny, you know it's really wet. But also, it can look dry, but it's still wet. How do you know? You're going to touch it, and I would consider touching it with the back of your hand. Put your fingers in there when it's no more shiny, of course, and see how it feels. If it feels cold, you see a difference between that part, this space, and this space. If it feels cold, 
it means that it's still not completely dry. It's dry on the surface, but it's not dry inside your paper. And remember, it's a very thick paper. So when it's, you don't feel any difference in temperatures, that's meaning it's completely dry. Okay, that's important, or at least a big part of it. So I'm gonna leave this apart, um, leave this to dry, and I'll be back to throw in some leaves in here and make it pop out a little bit more. Okay, so it's almost dry everywhere. As you can see, there are so, still some shiny areas, but I think I'm gonna be good. So I'm gonna start putting my leaves there. So a little bit of water and some green here. I've watered down already. And I'm just going to be very random here, a bit, a bit darker. And just throw some leaves in there. Nothing fancy. I mean, really, anybody can do this. You can use just the size, the side of your... Um, I'm pressing down. My, my uh, paintbrush is not vertical. It's really almost completely horizontal. So it's going to help me, you know, kind of already pre-make my um, my leaves there. I'm not trying to make something realistic. We don't even know what these flowers are. I'm just throwing some not, some color in there, some darker colors. It's probably a bit too bright for a watercolor. Let me put it around here. It's going to be a bit nicer for you. Sorry if I'm on the side, I just can't paint straight. And you can go a little bit off your heart there if you want to. You don't have to really stay in it. That's totally fine. And I'm going to throw a little bit more here. And I'm going to call it good. There you go. So there is a bit of green that makes everything pop out a little bit. And you can, you can create some here also. Oh, sorry for the squeaking. It's my little kitty. Choopy. Choopy. Are you hungry? No? She likes to talk usually. Choopy? Oh. Yeah? You want a hug? Oh. A big hug or a small hug? I think she wants to eat. It's time. It's, uh, yeah, it's almost 7.30 p.m., so she's hungry. So there you go. I'm going to call it good. I don't want to put two more. Maybe there is a little something here, maybe a little gap. Let me put it just there. Okay, that's fine. You need to know when to stop, and that's always very difficult. So I'm going to call it good. I'm again, I'm going to let this dry, and then we'll put our card together. All right, my card is dry, and I'm going to put it in shape a little bit. I've used a, uh, a hair dryer to do this, so to, to speed up a little bit the process. So I've done it on the front side and also a little bit on the back side, which helps the paper not buckle too much. So it's kind of straight, and you can always, it's very flexible, so put it back straight. Now I'm going to use an eraser. Make, do this when you really are sure that your paint is dry, because if you don't do this, if your paint is not dry, you might just pull the paint and ruin your painting. So that's really important. And that's good. So there you go. One more. That's fine. And now we're going to put it in place. So I'm going to use double-sided adhesive for this. And I'm going to be generous with it. Because it's... The paper is quite heavy. I'm going to glue this down here and center it. And I think it's going to look even nicer than that what I have done previously. And now to finish it up and spice it up a little bit, I have these uh, corners. They come from, and I showed you that before, uh, from In Love Art. So they brought me, they, they sent me these two dies, Ashley, and you can cut as many as you wish. And I've cut that in two different colors. So I've used the black in my first example, 
And I think I'm going to change for something. It's just like I didn't cut out the, the heart this time. I'm going to leave it with a paper. And I think it's even better because we need this white to make it pop out. So I've got two options. Use this one and I'm probably not going to frame it all around because I think it's going to be too much and it's going to also kind of hide my painting and I think it's a shame because if you did something really nice you maybe don't want to hide it. So either this way or just on the bottom here that could be nice. That could be an option but um, there is something I prefer using gold again. So this is gold you can see that. Just do this in these two corners. I think it's pretty. It's lightweight. It's very airy. There's not much of that gold and I think I'm going to go for this. So I've already used a um, my dies here and I put it into my Xyra machine to make them into stickers so I won't have any white spots, not white spots, but shiny spots of glue which I really don't like. And all the glues I, I have are kind of very shiny when they're dry. Even my tacky glue dries shiny and I don't really... For most of my things, the things I do, it's fine, but when you, you do use intricate dyes, you don't want anything shiny. In case you, you moved it a, a little bit around, I'm going to show you that on my card. So even though I'm hiding a little bit of my heart, it's not completely hidden. So can you see this maybe? Yeah, yeah, you obviously see it. And I hate that. I really don't like this, this shiny part. And it's tacky glue. It's, I, I thought it was going to dry opaque or, I mean, completely transparent. But And I'm just taking away all these bits of pieces of my um, the sticker. Sometimes it, it stays in here in the, in the holes. Just you paper napkin and it's going to remove everything. And that looks perfect. I don't use my uh, Xyron enough and I think it's great. Look at this. Can you see the... the uh, let me put a little bit of shadow here. It's... I love this. I love this one. So even though I cover it up a little bit, I'm not covering the whole stuff. And what I would do probably... I, I didn't think about it before. But here on the bottom left corner, I would write, uh, be my Valentine's or I just, I love you. It would be something really nice for your loved one, uh, whoever it may be. Or sometimes just even good friends. You know, it's nice to give them and send them a little love and a little bit of, uh, of heart like this. And it was so easily done. You don't, have to, you don't need to have any special skills and paintings. I do believe, you tell me what you think that bigger flowers look probably nicer than the tiny ones. You tell me which one you prefer. Bigger flowers, smaller flowers. I mean, it, they look completely different because of the white as well. I prefer this one definitely, but let me um, ask you the question, which one do you prefer? And please leave your comments down below. Thank you so much. Please give me some thumbs up for this video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button and also share on social medias. And take a look at all the videos I suggest. There, You have some in the upper right corner there and also three or four other video suggestions in the end of all my videos. Thank you so much. Take care and see you soon.